After looking through some of the feedback, I've seen that you guys want some additional help with the battle map. So I wanted to do just a quick crash course here. Uh, this should be a quick one, uh, I hope, but we'll go over a lot of the little tips and tricks as well as UI elements that can really help you win fights during the Three Kingdoms. So to start off, you know, we're on the battle map. I'm using a custom battle real quick. We're in the deployment phase. Before we even get into anything, I want to talk about the options menu. So will press escape, go to interface. This is going to be the stuff that you would typically see on your battle map. Now, you can change alliance coloring if you want, default to run, uh, default to guard mode if you want that. I don't. Um, the drag outlines. Now, unit category sorting is kind of important. It, it might make things a little bit easier for you if you're not used to it. When I first played Three Kingdoms, I found this setup a little jarring, but now I actually prefer it for Three Kingdoms in specific. But... If you want a more classic Total War approach to things, or at least a Total War Warhammer approach to your unit uh, selection in the bottom, go ahead and press Escape, go to Interface, and then select Unit Category Sorting. Um, in addition, we'll talk about another one called Drag Out Single Line. Uh, you can change other things here, like groups that lock automatically when you create them, uh, default to Skirmish. I'm actually going to shut that off. I don't ever put things into Skirmish mode more, than, more often than not. Um, and another one called Alternative Unit Cards. So I'll show you these two in just a second here. So let's confirm this. I want to show you how the game works. Oh, and you can also see this. Take a look. We changed the layout now. We can see all of our characters and then all the units in their respective grouping. So here's swords. Here's spear in uh, halberd militia or infantry, followed by uh, archers. And then lastly, your cab at the very, very bottom. But it's typically going to be by color. So blue will be here, green will be here, and then purple will be here. Uh, red will be, I think red's in front of uh, purple, I can't remember. Now, default, this is the way that Three Kingdoms will set things up. As I drag this out, it will set them up in a formation that I select through this. The standard formation is Eagle's Wing, which we already see. You can see that the cab is on our left and right, spears or infantry in the center, and then um, archers behind them. You can you can configure these however you want. I typically just always use Eagle's Wing or I set things up how I want them to be. Um, if you can, I'd like to think of this as like the typical Roman legionnaire way of, of doing things with your um, uh, your infantry in the center, your equities in the left and right, equites, and then you also have your uh, archers in the very back. So it's just this, the standard construction of any fucking military force. <laughs> now, you can change that though. You can go into interface and you can click drag out straight single or drag out single line instead and then this will happen. So rather than it putting into a formation, it just drags out this gigantic huge this gigantic huge line just like that. I don't prefer that. So I'm going to go back to interface and unclick that. Now, alternative unit cards, um, one of the biggest issues in the kind of the initial inception of Three Kingdoms was that um, the unit cards were not characteristic of the game. So I have the alternative unit cards turned on. This is, should be them by default. When you boot the game up, this is what they should look like. I don't prefer that. I know a lot of you don't as well. So if you don't, press escape, interface, and then turn on alternative unit cards. Confirm. Boom. There you go. So that will uh, lock in your, your cool, fancy unit cards. Uh, in addition to that, for those of you that have played Total War Warhammer, you know that K will hide the interface for you. Pressing Alt-K will cinematically hide the interface for you. Um, and then in Warhammer, if you pressed N, you would zoom in like this. That is not bound by default in this game. So you have to go to Escape, go to Controls, Go to Battle, Game UI Controls, and you want Camera Zoom. I made it N, so it's the same. As, I set it the same as um, uh, Warhammer. Then you have to press Confirm, and it will then save it. It'll ask you to save your controls in a specific configuration. Um, we've clearly, I've already done that, so it won't change anything for me. Now, there are, are some other things, you know, like selecting alls, Control A, stuff like that. Um, I've never really used that, but if, you, if it does help you, please, by all means, Control A will select everything. Using comma and period will select the next unit for you. 
I mean, it'll, it should be going by retinue, I believe. But as you can see, as I press it, it'll be popping through each character and their retinue. Um, I'm actually going to configure this back to the way I prefer it with unit category sorting. I like it to be the standard default way. It's just easier for me to do things. Now, before we get into like unit grouping and stuff like that, there's one last thing. Um, I've set this up how this should look when you start the game. I, I can't remember. But if you hold down spacebar, you'll see this little menu on the right side. Bring it out. And you can see that the unit icons are now all above the, uh, the units and the individual characters. When you hold space, I like those to be on by default. It does break a little bit of the immersion, but in my mind, it makes it easier for me to make on-the-spot decisions. So, you'll find unit ID. Um, there's three categories here. The red button denotes that it's always off. The green button denotes that it will be on when you press spacebar. And then the padlock denotes that it will always be on. So I want unit IDs always on. See? Now, again, if they're always off, even spacebar won't turn them back on. Unit IDs always on. Now, unit ID details is another thing. You can see, I'm going to zoom in over here over to just one of our heroes here. You can see that he's got, you can see as a champion, he's Guan Yu, uh, he's fresh, and he's confident. But I don't know that at a glance, and I'd like to know that at a glance. So I padlock unit details. This will tell me that he is both fresh, or I'm sorry, fresh, and he's confident right now. Um, that way, when I'm just looking at the battle map, it just gives me a lot more information at a glance rather than me having to press spacebar to get a good idea of that. I, it's my preferred way of playing. Uh, you don't have to do that, but if you were looking for it, that's how you would get it. In addition, uh, if you have a hard time controlling and seeing your army, you can press tab to jump into strategic view, which you saw me do earlier. Uh, we are in the deployment phase, so this will change once we uh, get going. Now, another thing I want to talk about is hide foliage. Now, by default, it should look like this. You can see how all the trees are still present. If I hold spacebar, they're still present. Um, I believe by default it should be set like this, so when you hold spacebar, the trees disappear. I hide the foliage all the time, because if I'm on the fly trying to command a military force in a, in a forest, I don't want to have to press spacebar. Um, I know, it, it, again, it's immersion breaking, but at the same time, it helps you play the game. <laughs> so, those are some factors that will help you out alone, with just those things, just turning those on alone. Um, I, I'm a big fan of them. Uh, occlusion outlines, I believe, are... You, oh no, or occlusion outlines. I can't remember occlusion outlines. Um, it's when you usually when you cover through a building. Like if you were to go behind a building, occlusion outlines will be on if you hold down spacebar. Um, you can keep those on or off your call. Hero portraits, unit portraits. I keep them on as well. Um, threat level will denote whether or not something you attack you're going to be attacking is going to be a good match for your character. So let's say I take these peasant spearmen and I charge them into tiger and leopard heavy cavalry, it'll show that their threat level is way, way higher. They'll just mulch through. Even though they're spearmen, they're light spear infantry. You want to look at those things. Light, medium, I don't think I have any medium thing here, to be totally honest. Light, medium, and heavy denotes whether or not things can counter them properly. So, light spears can counter light cav easily. They will have a harder time with medium cav, and they will have a near impossible time with heavy cav. The same thing can be said for heavy spears versus light, medium, and heavy cavalry. So when you see light spears, that does denote the level of armor as well as their weaponry. So be mindful of those things. Uh, fire arcs. When you have this locked, you can always see how your units will be firing. Um, I just like to have that on spacebar. That's not as that's not as crucial for me. Uh, movement paths. Um, again, I I do it once, and that's all. Now. Before we move into the actual start battle and showing you some other cool things, um, people have mentioned that they like, uh, they don't really know how to move things around the battle map like I typically do. And if you guys can hear a cat, that's Ninja. He's just hanging out. Um, so let's say I want to take Guan Yu, or let's just let's just take the whole block, the whole kit and caboodle. And you can right click and they'll just bounce around like you would normally in the deployment phase. But I find it a lot easier to. Um, Use Alt click. So let's say I really want these these guys right here. I want them to be together, so I'll click them, even though they're in separate spots. You, know, you click by holding down Control and clicking separate items. 
and then holding down right click and dragging and there you go you've kind of created your own little secondary force here now if you hold down alt on your keyboard hold down left click you can drag and drop them like this making it a little bit easier to say okay now i really want i've done this now let me get a unit of of this guy's right there versus trying to go like this and go okay well oh damn it no okay damn it fuck oh okay all right fuck this can just really help you pinpoint exactly where you want them to be. Because sometimes pressing down right click and dragging can make it so that they're, especially if you're OCD like me, it can make it so they're a little out of whack of what how you want your formation. This allows you to keep your formation in a little bit tighter of a of an intention. And Ninja just wants some serious attention right now. He's like, if you don't fucking pet me, you won't finish that video. <laughs> um, Ninja's a cat, by the way. So uh, that's why he meows. Uh, if you see another icon here, though, some characters will give the ability to gorilla deploy with their retinue. You can see that right there. So how we would do that is you click them and gorilla deployment means that this is your deployment zone. Boop. You can deploy outside of your deployment zone. Quick, easy, simple. Guan Yu and uh, Zhang Kai both allow that in their, uh, in their military, so you can do that. But that for the most part sums up your deployment. Pretty easy there, nothing too crazy. Um, Really, once you've done that, you, you've kind of mastered just pretty much putting things onto the battlefield. Uh, one thing to note, too, is that depending on your character's class will depend upon where they are automatically when you... Oh, control A. Control A and when you do this. So, strategists and uh, commanders will align behind your forces, while champions, sentinels, veterans, um, I think healers do as well will align in front of your forces. So it just depends on the actual combat ability of those characters um, and where they would typically be. Let's, let's push all the way to the edge here. We'll press start battle. So we can see our enemy forces coming our way, or no, they're just sitting there. Now, you can do some other stuff that I, have, I, I should have mentioned in the actual deployment zone, but all characters that have horses can dismount. And dismount. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> and he can get right back on his horse immediately if he needs to. So if you're having your character charge an army full of spears, you can have him dismount to just kind of wade through them easily. I'll get back on that mount. Now some other things with the character. Again, I should, probably should have talked about this in deployment, but that's okay. Um, are there abilities? If it has a gold bracket around it with little points, it's an active ability. And you can only use it typically, typically, if you're in melee or engaged in a duel. Lastly, you have the silver rimmed ones that don't have any points. Those are passive buffs. They will always be present or, or they're present if they engage into melee. Like for instance, oh, this is Sentinel doesn't have one. The, the Sentinel has one like called like something of steel. And it's as they are in prolonged combat, they get more and more uh, uh, damage buffs. Same thing here. So see Adamant Resolve um, gives you this little buff of a constant melee evasion in a 50 meter radius uh, for 20 seconds. Oh, that's an active one. Hmm. That's that, that is recently changed, by the way. <laughs> um, so binding fury then means that it's a melee attack versus this, saying it's an active buff. So all buffs are circles versus the um, the actual melee attacks are the pointed star ones like that. So apologize for that. Now you have some other uh, little buttons that you can click here. You can click this to automatically reject any proposed duels. This can be great if you have stuffing like a really, really something like a really wounded character, or you don't really want to fight a duel with a commander or a strategist. You can click that, and they'll never ever get in duels. You've got that option. Um, now, one thing that's really important, I think, with your archers. Go ahead, and we'll also talk about grouping too. Right now, um, we'll take all of our archers that ever wants to drag drag and click all of our archers here and we'll put them in control group two by pressing control two on the keyboard boom locked them into a control group now this toggle lock group button means that if you keep them in a, in a certain like staggered formation let's say we do this um this might make them harder to be targeted by a wind spell if you're in warhammer 2 but let's say you want them in that formation well if you put them in a group and you go to right click, they're going to move back into a line. If I lock this toggled group, they will always be just like this. 
I can't even change their their separation. They will always be like that. So that's something to be mindful of. Now, uh, we've got our tall our set formation of archers. Let's do the same thing now with all of our um, infantry. We'll control click all of them. That's not it. You know, we'll actually even put our veteran in that group. We'll press control one. They're set. And again, see, this is not a locked group, so I can get all stringy with it and fancy. Now, we talked about how with alt left click, you can drag and do this, right? Well, check this out. We have control group one selected. We're going to hold down alt and we're going to click on a point on the map and press right click and hold it down. So now we can pretty much pivot off of the center of this control group and decide how we want this group to form up. This prevents you from having to right click and drag if you don't want to do that. Then we can take control group two, hold down space to find out where the, uh, the other group just went, hold down alt and do the same damn thing. Boom. Now our formations are moving up pretty much in line. Uh, you can bake this one large control group if you so wish. I'm not that way. Um, now with archers, you have some other little abilities here. For one, toggle skirmish mode. So when things get close to them, they will automatically run away. We're going to go ahead and turn that off. You can also switch between flaming shot and standard shot. We'll just keep it as it is. Let's bring our other arm closer. I think they've got... Oh yeah, dude, so... Uh, Huang Zhang does a shit ton of damage. As you can see, he is just completely capping our character here. We're going to move him back. Now, let's go ahead and move this this whole army up. And I'll show you some other tr tricky tricks. <coughs> so, man, look at him. Zhang Kai is gone. <laughs> he is such a strong character. But, um, let's go ahead and pause here so we don't lose our forces by the time we get there. Um, archers can also choose toggle fire at will and guard mode. So guard mode is present on all units, but it's very important for archers because if you give an attack order to an archer without guard mode on, they will pursue the target if they leave their firing arc. So keeping to or toggling this on for our entire archery range is a really, really good idea. This will allow them to keep firing at a unit. As soon as it leaves fire, its firing range, they'll switch to a new unit. So let's say they're firing at something and it flees off the board. Boom, they can now switch to a new unit. Very strong. Um, also, if you're dealing with a lot of uh, other formate or a lot of other archers, you can switch all of your infantry into a loose formation. Watch how this works itself out. They'll start to spread themselves out. Archers won't be able to get as good of purchase on them. Even if they've got shields, they'll get even more missile defense, basically. Now, the one last thing I want to talk about with your archers is the ability to set melee mode. So, let's say you've got uh, archers that are a hybrid unit, such as the, I think it's the Azure Dragons. Oops, pausing, because those guys are going to get melted up there. The Azure Dragons are very good at both melee and archery. But, let's say that your front line's getting compromised, and you want them to shore up the gap. You can press melee mode like that, and they will, instead of attacking a unit with their archery, which you can see by hovering over, they'll now go on, they'll go into combat with their hand weapons, in this case, their fists. Now, if I untoggle this, you'll see the icon will switch back to the arc of a um, ranged weapon. So that's a pr uh, pretty quick little ability there for you. Um, when you have a unit locked, if I lock this... Uh, this unit right there and I hold down alt and then I press right click they should do a one-to-one -one matchup across the board you can see here that they're moving forward it should be clicked all across the way here but basically when you have a unit locked like this their formation is set right so when you hold down alt and right click they should be moving across the way rather than all converging on one point so if I take my finger off of alt and right click Weird that they're, they're, it's showing that. It should show them all converging onto one. We'll take off lock and I'll show you. Yeah, see how it all shows them converging like that? Well, you don't want that, right? So you hold down alt, or lock it, and hold down alt, and they'll move forward and attack things in line. We're going to switch that formation out of loose because it's no good to us. And man, we need some help over here with this. So we're going to take this unit... And I don't, or these two guys, and I don't want them to, and this is our last little trick probably. I don't want them to charge headlong through everything. If I just double right click, 
they're going to go just balls deep right for them. Maybe I don't want them to run through a unit of spears that's right here or something like that. If you hold down shift, you, this little cursor, your, your cursor should change. You can now hold down right click and create the path of engagement that you want for them. So after that's done, you'll see that they'll go across this path of engagement and then head hit into these mounted saber militia. I've switched the uh, voiceovers to Chinese and I cannot recommend it enough. It makes it way more enjoyable. Archers are going hog wild here. All in, in defense mode, so they're not going to be moving off of their current targets. We're going to have them switch to targets that are not shielded. Do even more damage. They moved over to this thing, but they did not... Oh, those are... See, they're moving over here. Um, now, let's say... You can press P to pause, by the way. I've been doing it this entire time. <laughs> Here's your three combat controls. Or well, four, I guess. Or maybe even five. This is slow motion, so if you are if you really don't want to pause, you feel like you're cheating if you're pausing, you can use slow motion. Uh, you can press play to go back to normal motion. Press This is just going to toggle back and forth between your previous selected speed and pause. Um, also shows you how much time you have left in the engagement. This is forward one speed. Remember, pressing this will switch between your currently selected speed and pause. And this is forward fast, so, or your fast forward. See them kind of moving in slowly but surely. Now you can press T to toggle all three of these if you so wish. That'll go quickly for you if you want. But we've broken this unit. Let's just keep keep pushing the advantage here. Guan Yu, we're gonna send over here. Maybe even issue a duel. I'll show you that to kind of shore us up. Give us some range block defense. Adamant resolve there. So Guan Yu, I want you to duel. Um this guy. So a, a duel has been engaged, you press duel, you click, you select a guy, and you can see the entire time how Guan Yu is doing in the upper right corner. You can also kind of look across the entire battle map. Get this guy switch onto him. Um, get that onto them. And, yeah, you know what, let's just get that going. So you see, I'm doing other things in the battle map. I'm not focusing on Guan Yu, but at a glance, I can look here. At a glance over on this side of the, the conflict, I can see what's going on right here. I can click this to zoom in on it. Now, you if you take a look at what's going on here, they're about to start hitting into each other. Look at that. Brutal action. Ooh, a good parry. Ooh, coming in hard with a repost. Nice a dodge out of the way. Do we see a glissade? No, we don't because none of these guys are using rapiers. Now, you can see he's got Unstoppable, which is a passive buff. And his Binding Fury, I cannot use right now. And that is denoted by this circle at the bottom. It is an empty circle, thus it is on Recycle. If I click at Zhang Kai, I can see that this is green, thus it is being used. And now it is on Recycle. So the, the dot unfills. But Binding Fury is filled, so I can left click that and then use it right now. I'm not going to lie, man. Jean Kai, you're not in a good position. So, he has to be in melee to use it, and those guys jumped out of melee with him, unfortunately. But this allows you to really look at the rest of the battlefield and navigate the battlefield and what's going on. That guys are all out of ammo, too. We got to just push everything in here. Um, this allows you to kind of navigate what's going on across the battlefield and do things that you... That you need to do without focusing solely on this conflict. Um, Guan Yu, if you decide to put another character in there to interrupt this duel, you'll see here, um, running away will do that, but if I choose if I choose these guys and I right click, it'll say interrupting a duel will have consequences. Minus 25 morale, alliance, per uh, alliance and permanent. Um, so that'll be for the remainder of the fight. You can see that it looks like they're jumping in here. It looks like he's getting some, some relief, some help, some aid. And you just kind of have to focus on what makes the most sense for your engagements. Um, you can keep other characters around Guan Yu and give them a passive buff. Like say if Adamant Resolve was right here, Guan Yu could be getting a buff from that and be just fine. So these are hopefully some tips and tricks that will help you out on the battlefield. Um, clearly they didn't help me out in this one, but then again I was focusing on showing you guys some goodies here. We'll go ahead and press pause. 
Um, I don't think there's any other thing I wanted to talk about. Yeah, so if I click these things, it will help out Guan Yu in his fight. And it's not considered interrupting a duel. Those duels can really have a huge effect on you, especially if you win before a certain amount of time. It'll grant you even more benefits. Um, or if you last beyond a certain certain amount of time, like if it's such a such a powerful lord, like let's say your lord is Lu Bu, or, or you're fighting Lu Bu and your character's underpowered, you'll get more benefits if you last beyond a certain point. So you can buff them up so they can last through maybe a minute and a half and then run away at that point. It depends on what it is. You'll get certain things by the end of it. Now, if you kill a character that's a, a, a sibling or oath sworn or a brother, you'll buff up other characters um, if it's an enemy army. So you have to be mindful of all these little nuances as you play through the game. So as you get acquainted with the UI and all these little benefits, you should hopefully see a trend in how to really engage with things. But I hope this video breaks down that, that little barrier of entry with the actual battle map and makes things a lot easier for you guys. Thank you so much for watching here today. If you have any other questions, as always, please just go ahead and let me know in the comment section below. I will always be monitoring these no matter how old they get. I'll always be watching. But as always, guys, have a good one and take care.